اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والحمد للہ الذي جعلنا من المتمسکین بولایۃ امیر المؤمنین ولیمۃ المعصومین علیہم السلام والحمد للہ الذي ہدان لہذا وما کن لنہ تدی لولا ان ہدان اللہ والحمد للہ الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنه الله على اعدائهم اجمعين من يوم عداوتهم الى يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو اصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين اذ بعث فيهم رسولا من انفسهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه وان كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah the most kind the most merciful it's due to that kindness and mercy that we have these opportunities where we gather in remembrance and glorification of him tabarak wa ta'ala Then we begin this sermon the way the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi ma afdalu salatu wa salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad would begin many of his sermons by advising us and saying usikum ibadallah bi taqwallah that I advise you are the servants of God to be God conscious God fearing and pious human beings we have been discussing the 15th right or the 15th haq that is mentioned by our fourth imam alayhi salam in risalat al huquq and that is haq al sultan the right of those who possess authority over you in the previous sermon we had discussed the first characteristic of a good leader and we said that the first characteristic of a good leader is that they should be caring and nurturing the way a parent is caring and nurturing over their children in other words the leader is not satisfied with their own success rather they want to see the success of the entire group that they are leading and that's what makes a leader a true leader it's not a selfish desire rather they want to uplift the entire community alongside with them today we discuss four other additional characteristics of a good leader and inshallah You can, we can incorporate this in different areas of our lives. It's not just about having a leadership position in a company or in a business or at a mosque or of a country. Um, as we touched upon in the month of Ramadan when we were dissecting the letter to Malik um, that Imam alayhi salam wrote, a leader can happen in any time or in any situation. We could be leaders in our homes. We could be leaders with our friends. And so these are important characteristics that we need to remember of what constitutes and makes a good leader the second characteristic and this should have been the first of all of the great characteristics of a good leader is that a good leader needs to have taqwa yeah? they need to have a form of fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and constantly be god conscious in their actions and in their thoughts and in their minds in every situation 
they would need to ask themselves, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expect from me in this time? And you know, this is a characteristic that we don't see frequently in leadership positions, sadly. Right? Um, <clears throat> when we look at it from the global perspective, and the nationalistic leaders that we have, there could be a handful, if that only, who people we would say are God-conscious people. But the rest of the leaders, unfortunately, are secular in nature. They, are, they have their own interests in mind. Um, and unfortunately, we see that trickling. You know, there was a, there's a world body organization. Um, and there was a scholar at the head of this organization um, 30, 40 years ago, when they were talking about what constitutes a good leader. He proposed a paper at that time to say that the, one of the main characteristics of a good leader or the leaders that we select for this organization should be taqwa. Yeah? And it was a scholar who brought this out, but unfortunately the organization was filled with secular-minded people and so they rejected that characteristic of taqwa. And that organization suffered for many years after that because of that. right? Um, and so this is a characteristic that we have to seek within good leaders and for us to take that leadership position it's very important and crucial that we are God conscious in our dealings and we are constantly aware of the expectations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. The second characteristic of a good leader according to what we are taught is that the leader needs to be forgiving and overlooking mistakes. Yeah? Uh, when one has authority <clears throat> they have the ability to either use that authority to inflict their wrath upon people or they have that ability to really nurture people and overlook mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur verse number 22 wal yasfahu ala tuhibbuna an yaghfirallahu lakum yeah? He says let them forgive and let them overlook do you not wish that Allah should forgive you? Yeah? It's a very beautiful um, reality that we've always pointed out here. Kama to deen, to done. The way you practice is how it will be practiced upon you. If I am of a leadership position and there is no one who has higher authority than me, فَوْقَ kulli ذِي ilmin. Alim, and above everyone who has knowledge is one who has more knowledge, Allah says in the Quran. Yeah? And so even if I am of a leadership position and I feel that there is no one who has more authority than me, well guess what? Allah has more authority than me. And if I treat people unjustly, Allah says, then what claim do you have against me if I inflict my wrath upon you? And so one of the characteristics that we always have to embody in our dealings with people is that we need to be forgiving and overlooking. You know, the reality of our existence, and this is something that all of us can attest to, is that no one is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Right? On a daily basis, if we were to look within our lives and actually analyze our lives and take hisab of our lives at the end of the day, we would find on a daily basis that, ah, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> ah, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't thought that. Right? And these are things that happen in our lives all the time. You take that with all of the people in existence, we can't then expect to treat people of a higher standard than we treat ourselves or we act ourselves. And so overlooking and forgiving is one of the most important characteristics of one who is a leader. Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam ma salli ala Muhammad in the letter that he wrote to Malik instructing him of how to be a leader, he says to him, La tandamanna ala afu wa la tabjahanna bi uquba. He says, Never be sorry about forgiving people. Never regret that you have forgiven somebody. And never be pleased with punishing someone. Yeah? That's the quality of a good leader. Yeah? That's the second. The third characteristic that we are told that a good leader must have is that they must fulfill the promises that they make. Yeah? That when you say that you are going to do something, you do something. You know, not like what we see on campaign trails. You know? In the campaign trails, they will say whatever it is that they need to say to get elected and then you find that 95% of what they said that they would do doesn't even come into fruition. But a leader is one is when they say something that they are going to do, they do it. Otherwise, they don't make this type of commitment. This idea is so important in how we parent our children. 
Yeah? Because as parents, we are the leaders of that family. And it's crucial that we don't make promises to our children that we don't keep. If we say that we're going to take you to the park, you take them to the park. If you tell them that I'm going to buy you ice cream, you buy them ice cream. Don't ever say, you don't have to use the magic word of I promise. Yeah? You will say to but I didn't say I promise. No, when you give a word, you give a word, right? And this is something that the children will always remember, always remember, yeah? That Baba didn't fulfill this promise. That mommy didn't fulfill this promise. And they will go up saying the same things to you to please you in your face and then do things behind your back. Fulfill the promises that you make and in turn you will find that reciprocated to you. The fourth and final characteristic that we are informed about of what constitutes a good leader is that they need to be aware and informed about the condition of those that they lead. In other words, they can't be out of touch or disconnected with the people that they are supposed to guide. You know, it was very interesting. Um, we're going back a few decades, but I don't think anybody has asked this. This is the, this is the presidential elections. Uh, when the first Bush was running, they asked the question in that election, that do any of you know the price of milk? Yeah? And none of the people knew the price of milk. Yeah? A leader who's going to lead people who come from different backgrounds and different financial um, places can't be so disconnected to know what their constituents have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? Um, and so this is something that is very crucial, that when you are a leader, you need to exemplify that leadership by connecting with the people. And I think the same thing applies with parents. I wanted to spend a second sermon connecting this. You know, Alhamdulillah, I'm pleased to see the number of young children here. Bring your children for Juma. They're off from school now, right? We will try our best, inshallah, to formulate the second sermons of, on tips of how to make a more healthier family lifestyle for all of us, inshallah. But it's important that we bring them here. But likewise, you know, when we have children or when we have young ones within the community, we can't be so disconnected from them, right? Um, where we don't know what they're going through. We don't know the challenges that they are facing. Right? And this is one of the crucial responsibilities of parents to study. You constantly have to study. You have to study lingo. You know, one of the, one of the enjoyments that I have, we take ziyarat trips, alhamdulillah. And I had, got, had an opportunity to go for two years with 30 children from our madrasa. And one of my delights was to sit with them and say, okay, teach me new slang. Yeah? And subhanAllah, you know, the, the words that they are using now, I can't, I, I don't even know what these words are, right? And I've always felt like I'm connected, but I realized very quickly I wasn't connected like that, right? And so it's important that we try to connect. We try to relate. We try to understand what the grassroots are going through so that we are not disconnected from them. When you take all of these qualities of leadership, my brothers and sisters, apply it into your daily lives as parents. Apply it into your daily lives as grandparents. But use it and you will find that your connection and your relationship with those whom you have been given authority by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be much more fruitful and stronger on a daily basis. Wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستسرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد محمد وآل محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب محمد 
وصلي على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين ما صلي على محمد وآل محمد وصلي على سبتي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صلي على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. You know, when you have a bully, someone who bullies people, someone who wants to have their will um, always be dominant, there are generally two ways that one will respond to a bully, right? The first one would be where someone will fall in line with what the bully wishes so that they are not harassed or so that they are not threatened and they feel secure in that. Um, and then the other way is to hold firm and say that we will not succumb to your bullying. Now, that may lead to other uh, repercussions, right? But that is the firm way to stand. That is the way of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, that they don't um, accept humiliation. Hey, hat min villa, right? Um, Trump has been bullying people his entire life, right? From his days of business. Um, and now we see that even more in his presidency. Um, and in most cases that we know of, uh, Trump has succeeded in his bullying, right? People have fallen into line with exactly what he wants. The, one of the biggest examples we have is the, the way he bullied his way through the NAFTA talks with Canada and Mexico, right? If we look at the whole history and the whole tracing of what happened, um, he first threatened to cancel the existing NAFTA trade agreement, right? Um, unless he received some concessions. Um, and because Canada and Mexico realize how much they need America, um, they gave those concessions. But you know, when a bully gets a victory, they don't consider that to be the victory. They consider that as an opportunity to go and get more, right? Um, and so then he, after that, um, recognized, there's no doubt, the weakness that was within the leadership of Canada and Mexico. And so he went after more by imposing tariffs on steel and aluminum against them, right? Um, and then he finally lifted those tar tariffs, but warned that he could impose them at any time. This is classic bully, right? That I'm giving you a break, but I could come back any time. And so that you are now living in a constant state of threat. This is one of the greatest um, examples, really, right, of why one should never um, succumb to the wills of a bully. It'll never stop if you agree to it once, right? Um, and it, this, it's this egocentric and egomaniacal methodology that Trump uses, um, in his, and it's part of his personality that not only does he want to win, but as he says that he always wants to win bigly, right? That's his constant desire, is to continuously take that next step. And this is a similar approach that Trump has tried with Iran, right? That he negated the nuclear deal. If you look at the nuclear deal and the nuclear deal that he is proposing now, even people who have knowledge of these subjects say there's hardly any difference between the two. The only difference is that he did not put this deal into place. And so he, the fact that he negated this deal was without any grounds, really, but just because of his egocentric approach um, to life. And then he imposed sanctions when Iran did not back down. Um, and not only did he impose 
with some of the heaviest sanctions on the country. Uh, very recently, he imposed sanctions on Ayatollah Khamenei himself. Uh, may Allah give him a long life, inshallah. Um, and he went after other leadership positions by trying to financially cripple them. And through all of this, you know, we see a very beautiful example of how one should stand up to bullies. Right? Where they did not succumb to the desires of this bully. Rather, you really see um, the patience and the steadfastness of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al-Zahra alayhim as-salam within them. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And this display of leadership, quite honestly, is, is admirable. Right? And it's, it's something that deserves to be praised. Um, and we'll see, inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there are no consequences where innocent lives are lost and that inshallah it comes to an end. And, and we come to this to a third form of bullying now, right? Where currently uh, Trump is at a G20 meeting. Um, and he has come out with, again, that same bullying stance that any European countries who buys oil from Iran will be faced with sanctions. Right? And we're going to see now how these other countries respond to this form of bullying, whether they take the approach um, that has been seen by Iran or they take the approach that has been seen by Canada and Mexico. You know, we really um, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have leaders in our lives such as these, um, like Ayatollah Khamenei, like Sayyid Sistani and all of our great leaders who do not succumb to the bullying of powers that seem to be greater than them. We pray that we are constantly provided with leaders like those in Yemen, who even though they are surrounded from sea, land and air, yet they are resistant to the cause that is taking place and they continue to stand firm in their refusal to succumb to the wishes of those who have power. These are the type of leaders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. And when we see those type of leaders, it's our responsibility to support them and to pray for them and to constantly pray to Allah that we have such leaders that the Imam could use so that he can come quickly inshallah and save us from this distress. Wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bismillahi rahman rahim والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم